Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be solving the Lee code question, find right interval. All right, so this question, I think the question itself is a little bit confusing to understand. So what I'm gonna do is I'm first gonna read out the entire question and then let's kind of break it down into parts and see how that works along with our examples. Okay, so in this question, we're given a set of intervals for each of the intervals i, check if there exists an interval j whose start point is bigger than or equal to the end point of interval i, which can be called j is on the right of i. Okay, so let's just say we have two intervals, right? And one of them is i and one of them is j. So in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take i and then we're gonna look at its ending point. So the interval i is going to have an ending point and then we wanna compare it to other intervals. So in this case, the j interval, whose start point is bigger than or equal to the end point of i. Okay, so the second part is for any interval i, you need to store the minimum interval j's index, which means that the interval j has the minimum start point to build the right relationship for interval i. If interval j doesn't, doesn't exist, store negative one for interval i. Finally, you need to output the store values of each interval as an array. Note, you may assume that the interval's endpoint is always bigger than the start point, and you also assume that none of these intervals have the same start point. So this one's pretty important. Okay, so if that doesn't really make sense, let's just kind of walk through a question. So I'm gonna look at this example over here, example two, and the input we have is, we have three intervals. So the first interval starts at three, ends at four. Then we have starts at two, ends at three, starts at one, ends at two. So this is, those are the three combinations that we have. So let's just look at this step by step. So we have three comma four, and let's consider this to be i. And what we wanna check is, let's just go to the question super quickly. So check if there exists an interval j whose start point is bigger than or equal to the end point of interval i. Okay, so over here we have interval i, and its end point is the value four. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna check all the other intervals to see if its start point is equal to or bigger than the number four. So over here we have the number two, and well, two is less than four, so it doesn't count. And we have one, one is also less than four. So in this case, we don't have any uh, elements that are to the right of this. So in that case, we're gonna end up inputting, outputting, sorry, negative one. So three comma four outputs negative one. Okay, so now let's go to two comma three. So in two comma three, the end point has a value of three. So now we wanna check if any other interval, so this interval or this interval, has a start point equal to or greater than three. So let's look at one comma two, and the start point is, well, it's one, right? So one is less than three, so it doesn't matter. We're just gonna ignore that. But if you go to this one over here, the start point is three, and well, three is equal to three. So this is going to count as one of the elements that are to the right of this interval. So we're gonna give, since there's only one of them, we're going to be giving its interval. And this is, sorry, its index. And this interval is at the index of zero. So we return zero. So as you can see, two comma three returns a value of zero. And finally, we have one comma two. So the ending has a value of two. And now we wanna look at other intervals whose beginning is equal to or greater than two. So in this case, we have the number three or we have the number two. And both of them are equal to or greater than the number two. So which one do we end up choosing, right? Both of them are, uh, consider to the right of this interval. So this is where the second part of the question comes into play. For any interval i, you need to store the minimum interval j's index, which means that the interval j has a minimum start point to build the right relationship for in the interval. So in this case, we're gonna be choosing whatever has the minimum start point. So what are the two options we have? So these are the two options, and over here, we're comparing between two or three, right? So obviously two is lesser than three, so we're gonna give out this interval's index, which is at the index of one. And as you can see, we ended up outputting one. So hopefully that makes the question a lot more easier to understand. And now let's look at how we can actually solve it. In order to show you how we're going to be able to solve this, what I'll do is I'm gonna take the same example, so this one over here, and I'm just gonna write it down over here. It's the exact same example, and let's try to break it down step by step. So in our earlier kind of analysis of the question, we're always comparing the numbers uh, to see which one is bigger than the other one, right? So in such a case, uh, sorting our numbers would actually be a really good idea. So how would you sort it? Well, 
we would sort it according to whatever our beginning element is. So in this case, three, two, and one. But the problem with sorting is when we sort, we actually end up losing order of the current index, right? So when you sort this, this is currently at index two, but when you sort it, this ends up over here at index zero. So it completely messes up the index. So that's kind of a problem that we need to uh, tackle. And how we can do that is by enumerating our list and creating a new sort of array. So in this case, this is our array right now. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna change it a, a little bit. So first we're gonna start off by enumerating it. What does that mean? So if you enumerate this, you're gonna get zero. So you first get the index and then you get whatever is at that index. So zero comma three comma four. Then afterwards you get this. So this is at the first index and then you get two comma three. Okay, so we get everything like this, right? So we get the element according to its uh, index, right? So that's what enumerating does. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna sort it. But if you sort it like this, we're gonna sort it according to this value, which again, doesn't make sense. So we're gonna change this in such a way that the index comes in the ending. So that's actually pretty simple to do in code. So let me just show you how that looks like. So in this case, we're gonna have three comma four comma zero. So zero is gonna be the index, right? So over here, two comma three, and then the index, which is one. And finally, we have one comma two, and the index, which is, well, it's two. So pretty simple, and this is gonna be our new array. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna sort it according to the initial uh, intervals. So the beginning, that's what I meant to say. So now let's sort it, and when you sort it, it's gonna look at the same thing. So first we have one, so it's gonna be one comma two comma two. After that, we have two, so two comma three comma one. And finally, we have three, which is well, three comma four comma zero. Okay, so this is gonna be our sorted array, and now we're gonna work with this. And finally, we're gonna have one more array, and this is gonna be our output array. So this is gonna be our final result or output that we're gonna end up outputting. And what is this array gonna consist of? So what we're gonna do in the beginning, our array is gonna consist of only negative ones, and the length of it is going to be the exact same length of whatever our array is. So over here, the length of our array is three. We have three elements. So we're gonna have three, um, a length of three over here, and each of them is gonna start off uh, or initialize with a value of negative one. And if we want to, we're gonna end up change, uh, changing this value. And actually we're gonna have one more array, sorry. So this is gonna be called the beginning array. And all it's going to be, is going to, we're gonna take our sorted array, and we're only going to take whatever is in our, is in the beginning, right? So we're gonna take one, we're gonna take two, and we're gonna take three. So this, this, and this. Okay, so that's for that's it for our beginning area. So now we can start iterating through each of the elements. So I'll use the color green. And over here, we're first gonna iterate through our first element. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take out whatever the, whatever the ending value is for our interval. And in this case, the ending value is whatever is at the first index. So in this case, that's gonna be the value two. So right now we're gonna take the value two, so I'll just have it over here. And what we need to do is we need to find a position for two, which makes it so that it fits exactly inside of our beginning area. And we're, so what we're doing is we're gonna take the ending index, right? And we're gonna compare it with each of the beginning indexes. So currently two is gonna be at the zero index. So now we're gonna see two and compare it to the value one. Is two greater than one? It is. So then we're gonna move two and two is gonna be over here. Then we're gonna compare two with two, right? Since two is the element which is over there and two is equal to two. So when we have something which is equal to or greater than, then we're gonna stop. So this is where we're gonna place our number two. And when something is equal to the other element, we're just gonna place it to the left of it. So in this case, we're placing it to the left of it and we actually end up with this value, right? So two is placed at whatever is at the first index. So the placement of two is at whatever is at the first index. So now what we're going to end up doing is since this value two is placed currently at the first index, right? So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna to go to our array over here, the sorted one, and we're going to go to whatever is at the first index. So in this case, the one that is at the first index is this one over here. So this is at the first index, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take its index. So in this case, the index is placed at the very ending. 
So that's the value one. So we're gonna end up taking the value one and that is going to be the answer for this, right? So the right element is at starting at the in whatever is at index one. So we know that, but how do we know where to place it? And the answer to that is pretty simple. So we're gonna place it at whatever its index is. So in this case, the value is at the second index. So now we're going to go to the second index of our output and we're gonna change it to our new value, which is one. So this over here, we're gonna cross it out and this is going to now have a value of one. So there we go, it's a value of one. Let's just go back to our example. And as you can see, it's in the correct place. This over here has a value of one. So that doesn't make sense. Let's just go through one more iteration. Hopefully it makes sense over there. All right, so now that we're done with our first iteration, let's go on to the second element. So now we're at this element over here. And at this element, what we're going to do is we're gonna check the same thing. We're gonna get the ending element, right? Which is the value three. And now what we wanna do is we wanna see where can we place three in our beginning list so that it follows the exact same order. So is three greater than one? Yes, so currently we're gonna place three over here. Now let's compare that with two. So is three greater than two? Well, it is. So now we can place three over here. And now we have the value three. Three is equal to three. So in that case, we're done. We're gonna place the value three over here. And what index is that? Well, that's at the second index, right? So this is at the second index and we're gonna do the same steps. So now we're going to go to our sorted array go to whatever is at the second index. So in this case, zero, one, two. So this is at the second index. And now that we're over here, we're gonna get whatever its uh, index value is. So the index value for this is the number zero. So we have the number zero here, and that is going to be our answer. So zero, whatever's at the zeroth index is the right element for this interval. So how do we know where to place this in our output? So again, we're going to go to that interval and we're going to go to its in, we're going to go to its index. And how do we know what its index is? Well, same thing. We go to the ending value where we stored the index. So what this is telling us is we go to whatever is at index one. So this over here is the index one. And we're going to change its value to our new value, which is well zero. So let's cross this off. And this value over here becomes zero. And just to cross check with our answers it's perfect. So we found the value zero and we got the value one. And now we have our last and final iteration left. So in this iteration, we have the value four. So we're gonna end up getting the value four, oh, sorry. Okay, so we have the value four over here and we wanna see where can we place this value inside of our beginnings list. So let's do the same steps. We can put it four is greater than one. So it's over here, uh, four is greater than two. So it's here and four is also greater than three. So we're going to be ending up placing four over here at the very ending. Now the problem with that is when you're placing it at the very ending, that means that it has nothing to the right of it. So if you go back to our definition over here real quickly, uh, check if there exists an interval J whose start point is bigger than or equal to the end point of the interval I. So when we're placing a value at the very ending, that means that that condition is not met. And if you go back to this, it says, if the condition doesn't exist, then in that case, we're gonna store negative one. And so in this case, the condition does not exist. So we're not going to change this value and the value is going to end up staying as negative one. And this is going to be our final answer. So we're going to end up having negative one comma zero comma one as our final answer. And it's going to be inside of a list. And just to check over here, example two, negative one comma zero comma one, we got our answer. So now let's see how we can write this in code. And yeah, all right, so let's start off with the code part of this. And I just wanna say that if you do understand the theory part of this, the code is actually really simple. All we're doing is just replicating that. Anyways, that being said, so let's start off by redefining our intervals. So in the beginning, we're just given the intervals in a list. And we, we did two things to it. For first, we added the index of that value to the ending. So in the beginning, we just had the beginning value and the ending value. Now we're going to have the beginning value, ending value, and the index. So to do that, we're gonna be using list comprehension. Okay, so we're gonna start off with this, and how do we want the output to be? So we're gonna have the beginning value, then the ending value, and then index. So B stands for beginning, E stands for ending, uh, index is index. Okay, so how do we get this? So we're gonna, so we're gonna go for, 
index comma and then a beginning value comma ending value since that's the order we're given our values in and we're going to enumerate our current values so enumerate and we're going to enumerate the current interval so enumerate intervals so this is going to be the new values with the beginning ending and index and now what we want to do to it we can just do it over here I'll just add brackets around this and what we're going to do is we're going to sort it. To do that we can just do sort it and what it's going to do is going to sort it as per our first element and yeah. So now that we have this, uh, now we're going to store the other uh, area that we had which is going to be our output array. So I'll just call that results and what is it going to be? It's going to consist of all negative ones and this is going to have the same length as how many of our intervals we have. So we're going to take negative one, multiply that by how many intervals we have. So we're going to have the same length as intervals. So now we have our results area and we had one more area which stored all of the beginning values. Beginning, wait, I'm spelling it wrong. Okay, whatever, beginning values. Uh, so this is going to include all of the beginning values. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take B for beginning and now let's iterate through our intervals. So we have B, comma E, comma index in intervals and we're only going to take the beginning value okay so now we have the three areas defined so after we have this we can go inside of our for loop so for now we're going to iterate through each of our areas so for x in intervals so instead of just getting each interval let's uh, break it down into its further parts which is beginning ending and index so b e index okay so now that we have this we're going to do the first step which is to find which position we can place this value of our ending in the beginning vowels. So to do that, we're going to be using the bisect module. So I think that's inbuilt into Python. So import bisect and sorry, bisect. Okay, so now that we have this, we can perform this. So I'll just store this in a temporary var variable called x and we're going to do bisect. And remember I told you that when we have the same value, we're only going to end up choosing whatever is on the left. So that's what we're going to do, bisect dot bisect left. Okay, so now that we have this, we need to uh, define from what we want to do this. So we want to perform this on our beginning vowels. So beginning underscore vowels. And what value are we putting inside of this? So we're actually going to be putting the ending value and we want to see where that ending value falls in our beginning vowels list. So the ending value is just the variable e. Okay, so we have that. And now the, now the, so over here we're gonna get a value. And remember earlier we thought that when if a value is at placed at the very ending, then in that case, we're just gonna leave it be negative one. So in order to do that, so if this value is not equal to the very ending, so the very ending is nothing else but the length of intervals. So if it is not equal or and to be more specific, it's actually going to be the length of our beginning vowels, but uh, they both actually have the same length. But anyway, so we want to see the length. So if this x value, if it is equal to the length of our beginning vowels, then in that case, we know that it's at the ending and it has no elements to the right of that interval. So in that case, we're just going to let it be as negative one. So what we're going to do is we're going to do if x is not equal to the ending. So if it's not equal to length of beginning vowels, and in that case, we're going to change its value. So now we're going to go to our results array. And what index are we going to go to? Well, it's the same thing. We're going to take that index. So we have the index stored. So we're just going to go to that index. And now we need to put the value. So we need to go inside of our intervals list. And we need to go to whatever is at the x index. So at the x index, we want to get whatever that index is. And to get that, it's at the last element. So we can just do negative one and we're going to iterate through each of our beginning ending index. So all of our intervals and at the ending of this, we're just going to return our results array. So let me try submitting this and let's see what happens. So submit. Okay. So I spelled enumerate wrong. Sorry. And you M E R A T. All right. There we go. Hopefully this is correct. All right. Submit. And as you can see, our submission did get accepted. And finally, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Do let me know if you have any questions. And don't forget to like and subscribe if this video helped you. Thank you.